Welcome to Wednesday, June 11th, 2025. Your day weather podcast brought to you by ConverseCountyTourism.com. Feel the energy of Converse County. Explore Douglas's Railroad Heritage, Ayers Natural Bridge, and the Jackalope Legend. Glen Rock boasts scenic trails, dinosaur history, and small town charm. Plan your visit at ConverseCountyTourism.com. Well, you can see a beautiful shot of the Tetons here from this past weekend and the Osprey flying around. Those blue skies and the Tetons will be more under clouds, building clouds, as we'll have some June thunderstorm activity kicking in today as a small Pacific wave is going to bring scattered showers and thunderstorms to both sides of the divide. And we're going to have a few strong thunderstorms today. We'll kind of highlight that here in a minute. And basically from today through the weekend, thunderstorms will be a daily occurrence along and east of the Continental Divide. West of the Continental Divide, they'll be more spotty. Temperatures will be warm, summer-like warm, steady through the rest of this week and through the weekend and into early next week. Now, long-term question marks are in the forecast. We mentioned earlier in the week of a trough of low pressure arriving the middle of next week that could bring some cooler weather, but we have some disagreement in the long-term modeling. We'll show you that here in a moment. Here's a shot from last Friday with that last round of showers and thunderstorms and that wet period of weather in that first week of June in some portions of the region. Now, we certainly have turned warmer and drier and this is due to a westerly flow aloft, but you see that low there in Idaho. It's advancing eastward and is gonna arrive just in time later today during the warmest part of the day. And this is gonna set off showers and thunderstorms and there's a good little plume of moisture with it. You see the green and blue there, the precipitable water showing that there's ample moisture for shower and thunderstorm development with this system as it moves eastward. And so we're going to see the shower and thunderstorm activity in this mosaic of color you see here, where you see the green, the yellow, the redder colors. That's where the concentration of thunderstorms and showers will be the most high. So you can see that it's getting on both the western slope, along the divide, and out into the plains. Where we do have concern for some strong to severe thunderstorms today will be in that dark green area across Idaho, down into Salt Lake, in the northern and western Wyoming and southern areas of Montana there. This is because the timing of this system is just at the right time, the peak heating for the thunderstorms there to be strong. So that area in that darker green, you need to watch out for a little bit of everything from the thunderstorms. There is a risk of high winds. I think a strong wind gusts and also hail. There's your hail probabilities with these thunderstorms. So for Parts of Montana, Idaho, northern Utah, southern areas of the front range of the bighorns there, you're, you're going to see a risk of severe weather today. So watch out for the thunderstorms. Now tomorrow, the thunderstorms are going to be a little bit more south, more into southern Wyoming, Colorado, than into the plains. So do be ready for shower and thunderstorm activity Thursday to be a bit more concentrated, a little bit more east. And there's that marginal risk of severe weather tomorrow, a little bit further out into the plains. Would not be surprised if this area expands a little bit and we see some yellow when we update you tomorrow. So the next couple of days, getting a little bit more active with those thunderstorms. Now beyond tomorrow, as we get into Friday and the weekend, drier air will be further west into the Great Basin. And what we will see is a real definitive line here between east slope and west slope where the thunderstorms are going to be. So if you're going to be out on the long front range, the I-25 corridor, out along I-70, I-76, I-80 east, I-90 here, you're going to see the showers and thunderstorms where the moisture is going to be in strong daytime heating. West of the divide, a little bit of activity, but not very much. So it's all about what side of the divide you're on. And if you're right on the divide, well, you've got a little bit of everything, a little bit of both. You could have some thunderstorms, you may not. But as you get east, on the east slopes of the mountains, there will be moisture available. So this is Friday, this is Saturday, and this is Sunday. So as you plan your outdoor activities, plan around those afternoon and evening thunderstorms. And I think between Friday and Sunday, some of those thunderstorms, a few, are going to get a little bit on the strong side. So if you're going to a reservoir, your favorite camping spot, just keep in mind the early bird gets the good weather. Once we get into the early to mid-afternoon and evening hours is when the showers and thunderstorms are going to develop while the mornings will be beautiful. 
Now, when we look at temperatures between now and Sunday, they're pretty warm. You can see a lot of the west. We got this little, little uh, punch of warmer air coming across the middle part of the country here. But you can see most of the western United States is going to be, on the whole, over the next five days, above average temperatures. Much cooler over the eastern side of the U.S. As we go ahead and take a look at what will happen by the weekend, we see high pressure building here in New Mexico and bulging northward. So what we're going to have is some pretty warm temperatures, a lot of 80s and 90s this weekend across the central and southern Rockies and into the plains. However, we have this next dip coming into the Pacific Northwest. And as we go forward past the weekend, so the weekend will be warm with those afternoon and evening storms. And Monday and Tuesday is probably the same thing, very summer like. Now, long term, we have this change in the weather towards the middle to the end of next week. The European model is bringing a sizable trough into central Canada. This would be good news for the fires, much cooler wet weather where the fires are. The Pacific Northwest cools off and showers and thunderstorms could develop across the northern plains. This pattern, if it does develop, will lead to a significant cool down by late next week and next weekend. Look at these temperatures by next Thursday. Look at those temperatures across Canada and the Pacific Northwest. Now, that is the European solution, but interesting, when we take a look at the AI version, the AI version is not nearly as cold. But if we look at the European regular version, by next Saturday, we have a trough swinging through the northern Rockies and the northern plains, and I'm really a, quite a strong system. If you look at the date, this is the third weekend of June. If it comes in that strong, well, that will produce a lot of severe weather a lot of cool wet weather for the northern plains and the central and northern Rockies. Look at these temperatures by next Saturday. I'm not saying this is going to happen. I'll tell you why here in a minute, but this could happen. It's on the table. So the third weekend of June potentially could be a lot cooler, unsettled, and it would mean very wet conditions up here if this does develop. But the question marks are certainly arising when we compare models. This would be the five day period from late next week through next weekend. A very cool look to the weather pattern from right smack dab in the middle of June. The AI version though, keeps the trough stuck in the Pacific Northwest here, instead of being here. So it's far away, it's more than a week away, but it's something that we'll keep an eye on for you and monitor in the days ahead. Have yourself a great Wednesday, we'll see you tomorrow.